Hi, this is Maggie from Crafts the Charm. Thank you for stopping by my channel. I'm so glad you're here. I wanted to make a bunting with some Beatrix Potter pictures on it. Specifically, I wanted some rabbit pictures for spring or Easter. But if you were going to make this for a nursery, I would choose different pictures. Probably there are so many beautiful Beatrix Potter pictures. I found some pictures on Wikimedia Commons. Beatrix Potter's work is now in the public domain. So what I did was I downloaded the pictures and I fit them into a triangle shape and I did some editing on them to remove background characters and to make sure the backgrounds filled the triangles. I'm making these available on my blog. If you want them, there will be a link in the description. Once I had finished editing them, I printed them out to, to a page, and you can see how I did this here. I put one upside down, abutted right against another. These are 6 inches wide at the top by 8 inches long. And then I simply cut them out with a ruler and my box cutter knife. Now I have some muslin fabric here, which I'm just going to press nice and flat. And muslin is a little bit stiff, so this is a nice fabric for this. And then I'm just going to use Ordinary Matte Mod Podge. I'm going to apply it to the back of the pictures, and I'm going to glue them to the muslin. Now I'm leaving about somewhere between an inch and a quarter and an inch and a half between these images because I am going to cut out a border around the images. Now I did iron down over them after the Mod Podge dried using another piece of muslin as a press cloth just to get them nice and flat. I did a lot of ironing between steps on this project to keep this crisp. Now this is the triangle that I used in Photoshop to size the images and I've included this on my blog as well. I've given it a quarter inch border and now I'm going to cut it out and cut out the inside and then put that around each of my images and draw lines with pencil on the muslin around the outside of the triangle to give myself a quarter inch border around each of the images. And with all of those marked, I'm just going to use my rotary cutter and a ruler to cut out all of the triangles. Now I bought this gorgeous green ticking at Amazon and I will include a link in the description. It's a little bit heavyweight. It's really nice. So what I'm going to do is cut out the bunting piece from the green ticking. So I've made myself a pattern for this. And you can see an image of the pattern here. I drew it and cut it out of paper and then I thought it would be easier to work with something that was a little stiffer, so I cut it out of an old piece of poster board. So I'm leaving a two and a half inch margin at the top. That's just a two and a half inch rectangle at the top, and that's what we're going to fold over so we can thread a cord through that. And then there's the size that I want the triangle to be, which is about a half inch on each side around the triangle with the image on it, and then I've given a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around that. So I completed one pennant start to finish just to make sure that the process was going to go smoothly, and then the rest of them I did assembly line style. So I have seven pennants total. I did one start to finish, which I'm going to show you here, and then I did the other six all together. So the first thing I'm going to do is just cut that pennant shape 
out of the ticking fabric. When you're cutting these, I would recommend placing them on the fabric the way I'm showing you here. So alternating upside down and right side up. And that way, obviously, you will get the most out of your fabric. So once I had that cut out, I centered my muslin piece with the image on it in the bottom part, the triangle part of the pennant, and I used a few pins to hold that in place. Later, I just used two pins per pennant to hold them in place. And I measured with my tape measure here, but you can really eyeball these to get them centered. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to attach the muslin down to the ticking. And I tried a few different stitches for this on a practice pennant, and I decided that I liked the look of a zigzag stitch best. A zigzag stitch is a really nice forgiving stitch to do around the edge of something, and um, I just really liked the way it looked, actually. And I'm using a light green thread for this. So just zigzag over the edge all the way around. I used a pretty wide zigzag. I tried different sizes and I ended up doing a five millimeter zigzag. I like that wider width of the zigzag. Now with that done, I switched to an off-white thread and for the rest of the pennant, we're going to use an off-white thread. So the first thing I did was on that rectangular part at the top, I folded in the side edges a quarter inch each, pressed them down, and then I just sewed a straight stitch down each one. Once those were sewed down, I pressed down a quarter inch seam along the top. I did not stitch this one. I simply folded it over. And when I folded it over, I basically folded it to the top of the zigzag stitch. And then I sewed a straight stitch on the right side. Now to finish the edge of the ticking fabric, I decided I would sew a scallop stitch. So my sewing machine will do a few embroidery stitches. Now the way I did this was I started at the bottom. So the point below where my point of my muslin piece is. And the distance that I sewed this was to allow for that quarter inch seam allowance. So it's approximately a quarter inch from the edge of the fabric. I was actually able to sew this by aligning my presser foot with the zigzag stitch. And I started at the point and sewed back toward the rectangular part at the top. And then I flipped it over and started at the point again and sewed down the other side. This was so that the point would come out nice at the bottom. And it didn't look to me like the back side and the right side looked any different. So that's why I flipped it over and started at the point both times. Once you've done that, then you're going to trim the fabric close to the scalloping to get a nice scalloped edge. Now, truthfully, I like it a lot without the scalloped edge, but I wanted to finish the edges of the pennant. So that's why I decided to finish it this way. So once you have all of your pendants all sewn, the last step is to apply a coat of matte Mod Podge over the top of the image. Now I applied this not only over the top of the image, but 
up to the zigzag stitch. So I did the image and that piece of muslin, including covering the zigzag stitch. And this is just because we don't want that image to peel up or be unprotected. Now, honestly, I was pressing just about every step of the way. And once that Mod Podge had dried, I did turn these over and just give them a light press, but on a cotton setting, um, just to give them one final press. I did worry about like melting that Mod Podge, but that does not seem to have happened. To string the pennants, I'm going to use this decorative nautical rope from the Dollar Tree. This is nine and a half feet long. It is taped on the ends, but I found that it was easier to push it through the tops of the pennants if I put a large safety pin through the end. And I didn't really have to do anything except push it through. The safety pin I think was narrow enough that it went through quite easily. So I strung all of them onto the rope. Now when I chose these bunny images, I chose several in which the bunnies had carrots because I wanted to include some of these carrots from the Dollar Tree on this bunting. These carrots are twine wrapped styrofoam, I think, and they come six to a package. We're going to need two packages. And I thought that they would look best if I tied two of them together and then just sort of hung them over the rope, one on either side. So to do that, I took a little bit of green thread and I doubled it up and I did a lark's head knot over the top of one of the carrots. So that's basically just take the loop, the center of the piece of thread where it's doubled up and put the ends through the loop and pull it tight. And then I just tied it with a square knot or even a granny knot it would probably be fine around the top of the other carrot and trimmed off the extra thread. And then you can just hang it over your pennant with one carrot on one side and one carrot on the other side. And I put those carrots between each of the pennants. Now I tied a knot at each end of the rope, but I didn't cut it. And then about, I don't know, half a foot maybe, maybe a little bit more, eight inches from each end, I tied another knot because it was a little bit long for the window that I was going to hang it on. But this allows me to change the length of it for different places where I might hang it. And here it is. I'd love to know what you think of it. Please tell me in the comments. Tell me if you would like it for Easter or spring or for a nursery. My concern with using it in a nursery is that it is a rope, so I would want to make sure that it was well secured to the wall and out of reach of any children. I would be heartbroken if anybody got hurt from a piece of decor or anything, actually. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you enjoy this sort of content, please subscribe to Crafts the Charm. Thank you for spending time with me today. Take care.